Hello and welcome to another Haas tip of the day. Right now we're going to talk all about using an angled head on your Haas mill to drill and tap. Now this is a fun topic. We use right angled heads to reach features that can't be machined in any other way. And we also use them to save on operations. Like any part, make sure that you're using the right tool for the job. Now sometimes our parts are too large for a rotary product and we turn to right angled heads. Now for more information on can cycles in general, check out our G98, G99 video. In that video we talk all about clearance planes and starting positions and those kind of things. Watch that video, good information. Now typically when I want to drill a hole on a mill, I'm going to position along the X and Y axis and drill to a Z depth. Now, when I do that, I'm actually using the G17 plane. When we turn our machine on in the morning, it starts up in G17. Position the X and Y, drill to a Z depth. Now, if we're using a right angled head, it's because we want to drill at some funny angle. We don't want to be using our G17 plane. If we use a G18 plane, this means that we're going to be positioning ourselves along the X and the Z axis and drilling to a Y depth. If we want to drill along the X axis, we're going to use the G19 plane. We're going to position ourselves along the Y and the Z axis and drill to an X depth. Remember that G17, G18, and G19 plane selections are modal. So when we're done using them for a drilling cycle, we need to change things back to a G17 for the rest of our program. Okay, so that was a brief overview of our G17, G18, and G19 plane selections and how they affect our drilling and tapping can cycles. Now, our plane selection also affects which way arcs will be machined. Now, that's a topic for another video. Right now, I'm going to clear the whiteboard. We're going to give you an example of how to drill and tap along the x-axis using a G19. Now this program is going to drill along the x-axis, moving to our left. Now we've got proof programs in our bonus material, so be sure to stick around to the end of the video, click on today's bonus content. We've got programs that, that drill and tap in every direction, just for you. Okay, here's a simplified version of our program. Right off the bat, we notice that I'm using an M4 and not an M3 to start my spindle. This is why almost all right-angled heads have gear reversal. When we command an M3 in our program, the spindle is going to go in the opposite direction we think. Watch. I've, I've got a piece of tape here, and I'm going to attach it to our drill. And now I'm going to start the spindle going 50 RPMs in the clockwise direction. Now you can see that my spindle is going clockwise, while my drill is going counterclockwise. Now for drilling and tapping operations, make sure you understand and know the angled head that you're working with. In almost all cases, we've got to go backwards. So for a right hand tap, we want to use a G74 instead of a G84. And for a drill, we need to use an M4 instead of an M3. Typically, when we're drilling a hole, we position our drill just above the part, let's say to Z.1. And that ends up being our starting position or our clearance plane. For more information, check out the G98, G99 video. Now, on this part, it's not a typical drilling cycle. We're coming in with a right angled tool. So we're going to bring our tool just above the part to X.1. And that X.1 becomes our starting position, our clearance plane. From there, we may move up and down to our YZ location. We're going to move to Y0, Z minus 0.5. And from there, we're going to drill to a depth of x minus 0.5. Again, the control knows that our depth is going to be along our x-axis because we're using a G19. Now, our G81 is a modal can cycle, which means it's going to drill at every YZ location that it comes to. So, after it drills at Y0, we move to Y1.0, and it's going to drill another hole to X minus 0.5. When the can cycle is done, we cancel it with a G80, G0 like normal, and then we move the tool to a safe position. In this case, X 1.0. To finish up, we put the machine back into G17 so we can go back to normal milling. 
Because we're using a right angled head from the right side, all of our clearance plane and safety planes are going to be in the X positive direction. If we were cutting from the left side of the part, all of our clearance planes would be in the X minus direction. Now on the board, I used a simple G81 drilling cycle to keep things easy. On my real part, I used a G83 with a Q pec value. You can use that cycle as well with your right angled head. Well, we drilled the hole, now it's time to tap it. Now remember, we're on a next generation control. On a next gen control, all we've got to do is change that G81 to a G84. And now we're tapping, that's it. We also need to change our feed rates, right? Because we're using a tap and our RPM. I'm going to go a, a very wimpy 500 RPMs at 25 inches a minute. Now wait a second, here's a problem. I used a G84 to tap. Our right angled head reverses the direction of my spindle, so I can't use a G84. We should be using a G74. Okay, that looks better. Let's go ahead and run this program and see how it does. Okay, to recap, if we're going to program a typical hole, we're going to use the G17 plane. We're going to position along the X and Y axis and drill along the Z axis. If we want to drill along the Y axis, we're going to use the G18 plane. We're going to position our tool along the X and Z axis and drill along the Y axis. To drill and tap along the X axis, we're going to use the G19 plane. We're going to position our tool in the Y and the Z axis and drill to an X depth. Now, how does the control know which direction I'm coming from? Well, it doesn't really care. If I start from a, a positive X value and move towards a, a minus X value, it knows which direction I'm moving from. It knows that I'm drilling or tapping to the left. If I start from a X minus direction and move towards an X plus direction, it knows that I'm drilling or tapping to the right and it's going to adjust my clearance planes accordingly. What about this surface here, this 45 degree angle on the front of my part? Is that a G17, a G18, or a G19 plane? Well, it's, it's none of the above. We're not going to use typical cam cycles to drill and tap this hole. In this case, we're going to program this hole point to point. Let's take a look at the whiteboard and we'll show you how. Okay, so to drill a hole at some funny angle, doesn't matter what the angle is, all we've got to do is program a starting location. This is where the tip of our drill needs to move to before it drills the hole. Then we just use a G1 to feed to the end point of our drill. Now, tapping, that's a different cycle altogether. All we have to do to tap at any angle we want, vector tapping, is change our G01 to a G184 for clockwise tapping for a right hand tap. Now again, I'm forgetting that we're using a right angled head that reverses the direction of my spindle. So we're not going to use a G184, we're going to use a G174. This is a counterclockwise tapping cycle. It behaves and acts just like a G1, except it takes my feed rate matches it with an RPM and threads in and threads back out from the starting point to the end of the hole. Okay, so this G174 cycle is pretty cool. It'll work on any angle, and I mean any angle. You can start at any XYZ location and tap to any XYZ location. If you've got the right angled head, you can drill and tap at a compound angle. Now, how do you set up an angled head like this, the one that we've got, at 45 degrees? It's pretty simple. All you have to do is go into MDI and program an XY move at 45 degrees. Single block through that program with your indicator against the side of the, the angled head and dial it in, just like you would a vise. Now, Haas has been making mills for three decades, and there have been constant software improvements along the way. So which of the cycles that we talked about today can you use on your machine? Well, we've been able to drill using a G1 and vector tap using a G174, G184, 
all the way back since mill version 10.23. Now, if you want to use normal can cycles like a G81 in a G18 or G19 plane, you've been able to do that on your Haas mill since version 1802. Now, mills are leaving the factory today with the next generation control can do everything. They can drill using a G1, they can use normal can cycles in the G18 and G19 plane, normal drilling can cycles. They can vector tap using a G174 or G184, and they can also use typical tapping cycles like a G74 or G84 in the G18, G19 plane. So by far the best way to touch off your, your right angle tools is to use an offline tool presetter. You just take the entire assembly out, set it inside the tool presetter, and sweep the diameter and the length for that tool. Now, if you don't have that, you can write a custom macro to use your on-table tool presetter. But there's a lot of different variables involved with that. We're not going to cover that today. For this part, I simply jog my Z down, touching off the side of my tool on top of my part. Once there, I press the tool offset measure key. Then I bring my Z down by half the diameter of the tool. For my tip of my tool, left and right, my X and Y values, I'll just bring the tip of my tool up against the side of my part, which in this case is going to be my X0. And I will jog it over until the tip of the tool touches. From that point, I'm going to use part zero set to set a unique work offset that's going to be used only by the right angle tool. So Z value, I used my tool offset. X, Y value, I used my work offset. OK, now as we wind up this video, we've got something really important to talk about. The tool that we put into our spindle, this right angled head, is huge and it's heavy. We have to be careful that we designate it as a large tool on our pocket tool table. Even with that, that's going to slow down the tool change arm. The, the pocket up and pocket down is controlled by pneumatics. If your tool is right on the hairy edge of what is allowed weight wise, you might need to order a dampening kit and have a qualified Haas service engineer install it for you. Thanks, Orville. Perfect. Now, on top of that, this tool is big. It's giant. If you run a drill and you think, OK, I'm just fine, it doesn't hit anything in my machine, that doesn't mean anything. That drill might hit all the sheet metal as it goes round and round in the side mount tool changer carousel. So look at the sticker that's on the front of your machine that tells us what the max diameter and the max weight of the tool is that you're allowed to run on your particular machine. Now when I got this right angled head in the mail from Parlec, it came with its own tooling block. Now we do sell these, we sell our own tooling blocks, but these are kind of generic. You really want to get the, the exact tooling block necessary for the right angled head that you're buying from the manufacturer. Now, at the end of today's video, we're going to have a bunch of documents for you, a bunch of links. We're going to have a little blueprint that shows you the whole pattern of your Cat 40 or Cat 50 spindle, so you know what that bolt pattern is. We're also going to have all of the proof programs that we ran today, so you can use those as examples. We'll also have the part numbers for the tooling blocks and for that little dampener in case you need to, to slow down your, your pocket up and down if you've got a really heavy tool. That's it, and thanks for watching this. Haas tip of the day.